Julia. Good afternoon, Trini. Darling, happy to see you. Good evening. I'm, I guess it's uh, good, good evening. evening. I'm so sorry I was late, Julia. I just, you know, when your day just gets, it got complicated because I had to add something into it I didn't expect. Um, and as a result, I just went, yeah, whatever. We're here. Darling, you look fabulous and you don't look like you've had any stress this afternoon, but. Uh, I couldn't be more understanding. I'm always running around like a crazy woman trying to get to whatever appointment I've got on time. Fantastic. So I couldn't be more empathetic. So I don't know if you know how I introduced this, but after our conversation, Julia, um, last week when we were deciding what three topics we would cover and in which order, and yeah. you said this very, very interesting statement to me, which is, you know, under most, you know, there are circumstances which you feel you can cure sensitive skin. Yes, you can. Which, let's just think of the weight of that, ladies, for those of you who have spent years looking for the most, you know, paraben-free, sensitive, friendly product. And imagine a time when maybe you wouldn't have to do that so much. That would be incredible. So, Julia, should we start at why? Because when babies are born, generally, they're born without these sensitivities. Would you say that's where we start and we, we get them as we grow up? Absolutely. So the, number one is, look, uh, anybody who's ever thinking about getting pregnant should uh, before, in the vein of babies not having sensitive skin, okay, because some babies are born and subsequent, subsequently get sensitive skin soon thereafter. And why is that? Number one is a lot of times the mothers are full of heavy metals, et cetera. Okay, so if you're even thinking about getting pregnant, number one, you should be a year beforehand on omega-3 fish oils because uh, it helps prevent the, uh, to a certain extent, uh, as much as science knows at this point, the Asperger's, the, uh, all that sort of thing because uh, omegas are very important when the central nervous system starts forming, which it does immediately when you get pregnant. Number two is if mothers are full of heavy metals and toxins, and we all are in today's world, okay? Yeah. So the year before you're even thinking about getting pregnant, you should be doing things like eating lots of garlic and onions and chlorella and cilantro, coriander, as you call it, um, uh, herbs, herbs. Um, and, um, Why um, is this going to reduce potential sensitivity in babies? This reduces potential sensitivities because why do babies get sensitivities? Because a lot of times, look, if they're breastfed, sometimes the mothers are eating things that uh, they've got genetic food sensitivities, allergies to, and there are genetic allergies, okay? Okay. But generally, okay, the reason... Uh, so, for instance, why do they give people goat milk formula instead of regular formula? People aren't breastfeeding because it's less allergenic. Okay. And so, why do you get, why do people have allergies? Sensitive skin is, number one, it's generally gut inflammation, food allergies, but gut inflammation. The reason I'm an eat right for your blood type person is not because anything in medicine is black and white, it's all shades of gray, but because it reduces the, the internal inflammation that comes from eating things that maybe genetically you're allergic to, uh, to a certain extent that you've inherited from your mother, your father, maybe even your grandmother, grandfather. Remember, you get your genes from several generations. Yeah. But so... Uh, for instance, B blood type doesn't like chicken, okay? There's a number of things. Some people, everybody thinks that uh, avocados are good for everybody. O doesn't like avocados, okay? And so... Uh, the so, o Julia, just to, just to take a little step back for a second. Yeah. We, I just want to... Uh, because lots of questions are coming as we're going. So, so you're saying one thing if you're if you're at the stage of motherhood and you're going to have a baby, to try and fill yourself full of omega-3s is very good. What do you do if you're vegan? Because you said fish oils. Are there well, alternatives? Okay, so if you're vegan, okay. I want to answer this quickly, because it's just there's, one question. There's, there's algae-based EPA, DHA, which are the two chemicals that are the most important 
for when the central nervous system starts to form, which starts to form the minute the egg and the sperm start to form, okay? okay. So you can do it from algae. The problem is, and seaweed, but it doesn't have uh, so much of the EPA and DHA in there, so you have to take a lot of it, and it's expensive, okay? And okay. also, if you eat seaweed that's baked, you've negated that, okay? So it's yeah. a real problem. So, okay. um, so all right. So that I'm not. We're not going to answer that one day. And that's that's not a great the question. Of the day. Yeah. Yeah. But I just want to say. So, to. so one thing is, if you're a new mother, going to be a mother, think about these things to help prevent oh, in your child some some uh, and and also just to not be just be thinking about what contains heavy metals and what doesn't because that has an impact to you on the sensitivity of skin. Right. So tuna okay. you should avoid. Okay. You should avoid. Look, sushi, as much as I hate to say people shouldn't eat sushi, you shouldn't eat sushi because when you cook the fish, it vaporizes the heavy metal. So I, uh, I apologize, but nobody should eat sushi in today's world. What? Uh, at all? And the sushi industry should go, can go after me. Uh, but the bottom line is it's full of heavy metals in today's world because our oceans are polluted. So in the vein of sensitive skin, whether it be eczema, psoriasis, rosacea, et cetera, yeah. okay, the number one cause is your gut is inflamed. Okay, so okay. what do you do about that? Okay? okay, I was speaking to somebody yesterday um, uh, who uh, the child has, uh, mother and father both have food sensitivities. There's eczema genetically in the family. Okay, so yeah. you have genes, but something has to set off that gene. Okay, okay, so let's go back there, Julia. So there could be that because of what you're eating, and we're going to go into what to avoid, and you're going to talk about blood type diet in a second, but because of what you're eating, you're inflaming it. Separately, there is an inherent ability to inherit something, but you are saying you can either let it lie dormant or you can set it off. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. So okay. even, even if you have the gene, some, some sort of inflammation has to set it off, okay? Okay. You're not just okay. sitting by God with this thing. You Something has to set yeah. it off, and it's some sort of an inflammatory process. So what causes an inflammatory process and exacerbates eczema, psoriasis, uh, sensitive skin, rosacea, whatever, in large pores? That's all. Acne? Would you put acne in there, acne, Julia? I'd put that in there, too. Put it in something there. has to set okay. it off. And the number one cause is you are what you eat, food is your medicine, okay? So eating right for your blood type, even though that's not, I mean, there's no gospel, black and white, this is the absolute roadmap. But I will tell you that from experience and the experience of a lot of other people that I interface with, that uh, you can knock back acne, rosacea, et cetera, eczema, whatever. Yeah. Number one by eating right for your blood type, at least 50% to 60%, I can knock back acne rosacea and do nothing else just by what people eat. Okay, so, so let me just understand that because it's a big statement, Julia. So you're saying of all the things you've seen of different ways people can eat to be their healthiest, I know you emphatically believe in this eating for your blood type. And if you follow that, do you think, do you think any woman today suffering from spots or rosation, whatever, she followed that to the letter, would she like halve her, her, her reaction? Absolutely. And maybe get rid of it, okay? But remember, there are other things that heap upon it, okay? What's the yeah. number one thing that heaps upon it in today's Stress. world? So the number one thing to make Stress. your sensitive, acneic, rosaceous, enlarged, poor, eczematous, psoriatic skin better is to eat right for your blood type. And okay. um, uh, within, however, corollary, within that blood type, there are people that genetically have allergies, okay? So do I see okay. people with allergies sometimes? Yes, but what is step one that everybody can do is follow, and I tell people, look, you don't have to believe me, sort it out. I mean, prove it to yourself because at the end of the day, that's what makes you do something. And so- yeah. The number one thing is follow, like the Marines go to boot camp. You follow uh, eat right for your blood type for a month, and 99% of my patients 
will tell me, oh, I never realized how bad I felt until I started eating right for my type, okay? So okay. number one is prove it to yourself and just do it for a month, okay? So Julia, how can I just say, because we always want to understand the simple way to do this. So if somebody's thinking, I've got, so let's say there's somebody watching, they think I've got allergies or I've got one of these things, because lots of people say, I've got this, what can I take? So, so listen in a way to what Julia's suggesting, which is get tested. So understand your blood group. That's, that's the first one. I know what your my... blood type is. Yes. Yeah. So I, I, I think I did a print print test with you, but I can't remember what it was. Yeah. yeah. There's a little kit. Everybody okay. can order it online. They can do right. it themselves. Or okay. Get... So they order a kit, probably yeah. about 20, 30 quid, whatever. They Less. get the thing. Yeah. And then I know that there is, because I then downloaded a book on an app, which is yeah, about eating, eating for your blood type. I downloaded that book. And it said, I mean, weirdly, because I love avocados. And it yeah. said I shouldn't really eat avocados. And I was like, right. and it's but that, Julia, that put me off at the first step. I know, but it's not that you should never, again, Prove it to yourself. For instance, I'm O. We don't like avocados. I can eat a little bit. Okay, it's not. Look, we're human beings. We're never going to eat completely for our blood type. We can't be yeah, good all okay. the time. It's very boring to be good. Okay? Yeah. But what you do, just like school days, most, you know, let's say five, four days, five days a week. Hi, buddy. Okay? And, yeah. And um, uh, you will recognize and what empowers you and substantiates it to you is to see the change how in your you body. feel. Do you yeah. get, because when your gut's inflamed, okay? So for instance, people have back acne. What causes back acne? It's not, you're not smitten my God with that. You are, it's your gut's inflamed and that's how your body manifested in many people. Chest what, acne, back, okay? What, back acne? Because Lila back has acne. spots on her back. Yeah. Oh, Back I mean, she hated that I said that. Yeah. yeah. And so, so number one is you do it for a month, prove it to yourself. Yeah. It's not that I never don't eat an avocado. I'll eat a little bit, but I yeah. know not to eat too much because it'll give me gas. It'll give me bloating. It makes me not feel good the next day. Okay. My may hurt a little bit. Okay. Yeah. So I don't, I don't deprive myself where I feel like, oh my God, I'm going to die if I don't have a avocado. But I yeah. know from experience that why do I want to feel bad the next day? Okay. Okay. But I want to get a pimple. And sometimes okay. I get a pimple if I eat too much of those things and I don't even have the acne gene. So, okay. That's All right. So, 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 okay, Julia. So, people, what's the book called? Because people can't find it. Okay. There's, so, number one, there's an app for the phone that's called Eat Right for Your Blood Type. You put in what your blood type is. Okay. So, you, you go to the Apple Store number and, two, and look up. Book. There's a book, the new book is called Live Right for Your Blood Type. You can download okay. it in any language of the world, okay? Are any we talking language. about metabolic regime correct? Well, it's metabolically, okay? That's a whole other layer. But in the vein of sensitive, eczematous, psoriatic, acneic, whatever skin, stick yeah. to Eat Right for Your Blood Type. And then if your gut's inflamed, step yeah. two. Okay. Okay. So step two. First step one is you want to stop inflaming it. So don't put in your mouth what's inflaming it. Do the yep. best of your human ability. Yeah. Uh, understanding that some days you're going to be bad and you understand. And then you see what it does to you because that's what empowers you not to do it as much. Yes. Okay? If it starts working and you start reducing your redness yeah. or sensitivity, you're going to be excited. Right. Okay. So yeah. step two. What else? What else causes your gut to be inflamed? So, for instance, A blood type, okay, yeah. is known historically, genetically to be low thyroid and low hydrochloric acid in your stomach. Your stomach is supposed to be a big vat of hydrochloric acid because the food we eat is not sterile. And so when you eat it, the hydrochloric acid kills the bacteria, the virus, the fungus, the parasites, everything that's in there, okay? So if people who get pimples on their neck Okay, that's caused by low hydrochloric acid in their stomach. So if your hydrochloric acid is low, then sometimes you will get, uh, it'll exacerbate rosacea, etc. So step one is eat right for your blood type. Step two is, and I throw that hydrochloric acid thing in there just so 
people can know about it because it's important, especially for A blood type. O and B is usually fairly impervious. They usually have plenty of hydrochloric acid. But if your thyroid's low, it'll lower your hydrochloric acid. I, mean, I don't want to go into the rabbit hole here. But yeah. number two is you should take probiotics. And why mm. probiotics? Number one, in the vein of COVID, they've shown that it keeps COVID from deploying. Okay? Yeah. So it helps keep you healthy. Number two is it coats your gut. Okay? And it makes your microbiome healthy. And the more you make your micro microbiome healthy, the less inflamed your gut is, the better your skin gets. So your yeah. sensitive skin, you're not, nobody decided to punish you uh, with sensitive skin. It's because your gut's inflamed. Okay. So if you, you're doing your probiotics, okay? Step three. What's the um, best probiotic uh, supplements? I mean, probiotics, there's many out there, but what supplements? So, look, there's people who do um, fermented foods, whatever. At the end of the day, you really need to take probiotics. I mean, at okay. the end of the okay. day, sometimes you I can just find a good one, go Julia, because somebody's saying, what's the right one? I'm just saying, Julia does okay. some, Victoria so Health do some. Uh, what's good? Yeah. How do you know there's which is shit and which is good? There's a lot of them. And the, at the end of the day, you should change them every three bottles. Look, I use one that's called orthobiotic by orthomolecular, okay? You can't get that all over the world, but there's ancient nutrition, which is another good one that you can get. I mean, don't get one. I am no fan of BioK or BioCult or those things you get in the UK uh, that are in, um, at, or kefir doesn't have enough in it. Yogurt doesn't have enough in it. You've got to take a probiotic, okay? Okay, and so all right. You go and you ask, you go to the, health food store, the whatever, the pharmacy, and you get the one that has the most, the highest number of lactobacillus, bifidus, okay. uh, saccharomyces. Okay. Uh, there's flora store. I mean, there's a lot of them. Just yeah. go to the store and read the label. Okay. Okay, great. So okay. we are eating right for our blood type. We're downloading the app. A few people in comments have left the name of the book. If you're inquiring, there is eat right for your blood type, and you said the, a new book has the just new come book out. The new book is live right for your blood type. Live, live right, right for your blood, for your blood type. type is the updated. Te is the updated yeah. Okay. okay. And so also, now, there's an app. So you're going to then right. take probiotics, which are going to be nurturing your gut. Okay. Next up, step three. Okay. Step three. In the vein of making your gut healthy. Okay. If you're a blood type, a blood type loves aloe juice. Now. Aloe juice, you can pretty much get it anywhere in the world, A-L-O-E, okay? Yeah. And you really want to get organic whole leaf aloe juice. What does it do? It coats Is this for everyone? Is this for everyone, Julia, okay. or just A -type? Blood type? A type. So, A blood type loves aloe juice, okay? okay? Now, the rest of us really should take glutamine. And glutamine is a powder. You can put it, for those people who hate pills, you can yeah. put it in a smoothie. You make yeah. your smoothie with green things. You, I mean, there's all sorts of, you know, you can put, you can get probiotic uh, powder. You can get green powder that has probiotics okay, in it. Okay, let's, yeah. But okay, so let's can, stick with this one, which is... So glutamine, mm -hmm. um, aloe doesn't hurt anybody, okay? But at the end of the day, O, B, blood types, it makes them go to the bathroom, have bowel movements a lot. But if you're constipated, it's great for that. Okay. okay. And okay. so you want to make your gut healthy and your skin beautiful. You got to have a bowel movement every day, at least once, preferably twice. Okay. Because okay? so, so, I find that um, is a really interesting. I mean, I know it's a whole new subject, Julia, but I remember little things when my skin was bad. There were lots of things, but I was much more constipated as well. And I think that must mean then that, that I'm not flushing things out. I've got things staying there. That's giving that's a really bad liver. gas. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of thing. Everywhere. Yeah. If you've yeah. got, and I say to people, and people don't like for me to talk about this, but it's true. Okay. So here's the facts. Deal with them, as I say. Um, is number one, if you have smelly gas, you're not eating right for your blood type, okay? It means your gut's inflamed, 
That's yeah. number one. Everybody has gas, but smelly gas is a symptom. Number yeah. two is if you're not having a bowel movement at least once a day without thinking about it, preferably twice a day, then yeah, you should take aloe juice. And how much do you take? You take like a shot glass full or two, an ounce, two ounces. A shot glass is like an ounce, okay? Yeah, yeah. And um, also, people who have pain in their stomach, okay, they have acid reflux, et cetera. Aloe's great for that. Puts out the fire in a minute. Yeah. And it's great for your skin. It's yeah. also great as a toner for your skin. When yeah. people have eczema, uh, psoriasis, uh, acne, it's a great toner. Okay? Aloe vera just on its so own. You, same thing you take on the outside, you put it on the inside. Yeah. So anytime your skin's inflamed, aloe's great for that too. So yeah. it kills a lot of birds with one stone. Now, O and B don't much like it. It's not that they dislike it, but it makes them have usually three or four bowel movements a day. And at the end of the day, who has time to go to the bathroom all those many times? Yeah. And so um, glutamine's a better choice. But so I give people who come in who have rosacea and um, eczema, et cetera, I put them on glutamine powder. Okay. And glutamine's available worldwide. Yeah. You go to the health food store, you go to, you know, any healthy grocery store, they usually have glutamine and you take a scoopful, you put it in water. It doesn't taste bad. Great for that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so um, glutamine. Now, if people, if people depending on, so, so you're all those skin sensitivity issues are number one. If you heal the gut, you virtually a hundred percent can heal the skin sensitivity, sensitivity issues. It's not going to happen overnight because you have to think when you're healing the skin in three month increments of time. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, uh, the other thing that helps cure it. Okay. So if you're a vegan, um, Julia, can you, I just say, if you're a type, you're saying aloe vera juice is very good. Oh, you should take it every day. It's great. You should take it every day. So mass photography, I'm just running through before we go on to the next thing you're going to mention, just a few questions that have come up so people along the route can get their questions yeah. answered. So somebody said, oh, I hear probiotics don't work because by the time they get down your, your tracks, there's nothing yeah. in them. So, so I just think, how, how can we kibosh the concept that people, oh, it doesn't work because. So it's like, to me, I'm just going to put it out there. Go to Victoria Health and get mega prebiotics or go onto Julia Hunter's site and get a good prebiotic. All I can tell you from experience, the these yeah. two people have really good ones, all right? And if you do use one, it will get to your stomach and it will help you, Julia. I would just say Absolutely. that is the, okay. It will yeah, help so, you. Yeah, and yeah. for people who are constipated, a lot of times you just put them on um, uh, probiotics Okay, their constipation goes away. Um, yeah. A lot of times, yeah. uh, but if you have a blood type, if, if your food sits in your stomach, if you feel like when you eat that you ate too much, when you really didn't eat that much, then you lack hydrochloric acid, which can also be the cause. So it's, it's in there as one of the things that I think about when I deal with people. And yeah. I put it out there so people know about it. Okay. Now, apple cider vinegar, somebody was asking, so, talked about, okay? Yeah. So apple cider vinegar serves as hydrochloric acid. A blood type loves apple cider vinegar, or B blood type loves apple cider vinegar. A can usually take it. O, if you take apple cider vinegar, it makes you feel nauseated in a minute. And O hates apple cider vinegar usually. So Julia. Okay? There's a there's a quite a few people who when I'm talking about supplements and I had the lovely man from Viva Maya who you've met Dr. Yeah. Shep, yeah, you know, on yeah. last week actually talking about gut health and stuff too. Yeah, but I think what's really interesting about this blood type concept is that there's certain things you eat and you just feel ugh, and that's you know we talk always about our body listening to our body, you know. So when you're saying somebody, like somebody said, I take aloe vera juice, but I have irritable bowel syndrome. It wasn't good for me. But it could be also her body is, is not the right blood type. Right. You know? Yeah. And look, um, uh, 
Viva, Viva Meyer is about, you know, what you eat at night. You don't digest as well as night. Da, da, da. It's the same thing with your skin. Your skin does certain things in the daytime, does certain things at night. Um, at the end of the day, your gut health, you are what you eat. Food is your medicine. That's the number yeah. one thing you can do for your health, your skin, yeah. your hair, your mood, your joints, yeah. your everything. Okay. Julia, I know we're going on to the next thing to do okay. for anyone who's just joined us. We're talking about can you cure sensitivity on your skin, whether it be rosacea, eczema, dermatitis, uh, acne. How much of that is um, what you're eating and what supplements you might be taking? Just one quick thing, last aloe vera. Can you put it in a smoothie or do you think it's better to be taken on? Oh, no, just put it in a smoothie. Fine. A lot of people don't like the way it tastes. You can put it okay. in anything. Okay. Okay. You can put it in water. You can put it in tea. You just can't cook it. I yeah. mean, you can heat it up. So Is it good for seboric dermatitis? Seboric dermatitis. I saw that question. Seboric dermatitis is a gene, but it's also caused by, yes, your gut's inflamed. You're eating, uh, you've got a sugar issue. Okay, now, some people have seborrheic dermatitis. Seborrheic dermatitis is a symptom of gut inflammation. Okay, fine. I mean, I, great. So just then, count. two things here on glutamine, Julia. So is glutamine good for skin? I think you've answered that question because you're saying it really helps. Really good for Getting gut. rid of inflammation. And is L-glutamine the same as glutamine l glutamine is what you want okay yeah that's okay. the chirally, chemically correct form l glutamine is what you take and yeah. so okay. uh but uh seborrheic dermatitis is a classic example of your guts inflamed and you've got the gene and these are the people who um don't need to be doing um uh they need to really avoid the sweets the the uh, starches, all that sort of thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, very important. Um, and there's a really good non-toxic shampoo that's coming out for that. I'll tell you okay. about that. All okay. right. A little so. things here, Julia, um, because there is a lot of hype and a lot of my audience ask about this. But if we think of the apple cider vinegar and where that sits for which blood type, kabucha and bovine collagen powder, lots of you know, lots of noise, especially kabucha as well. But are these things also things that you would say, if you're a certain blood type, you could take them or not? You know what I mean? Yes. Because they're sort of in kombucha. between a food and a supplement. Yes, yeah, so kombucha, just like apple cider vinegar, the, the blood types that don't like apple cider vinegar, okay, for instance, I'm O blood type. You give me an apple cider vinegar and I'll be nauseated in a New York second, okay? Same okay. thing with kombucha. It's just, kombucha is just apple cider vinegar in the big right. picture in and okay. okay so yeah uh, does it serve as hydrochloric acid yes but here's what i find from experience is that i always tell people to do apple cider vinegar if they're a blood type or b blood type usually a can take it although it says in the book they're not supposed to but usually a does well with it um is my experience um b um likes it i always i always have to have the okay. book okay people look it can up. find out but, julia that's fine. yeah they, they can, can find out um, but, very quickly, um, Julia, if yeah. you are diabetic and probiotics, is there anything you should avoid? Can you still take them? I presume. Oh, no. Probiotics are fabulous for, for um, diabetics. Okay. okay. Anything right. that makes them healthier, uh, all that sugar uh, is causing all sorts of problems. So, yes, getting their microbiome right yeah. is only going to help their skin. If you notice with diabetics, their skin gets thickened, and that's from all the sugar, the glycation. Yeah. So let's keep going on um, uh, sensitive skin. So the other thing, and in the vein of COVID and sensitive skin, okay, yeah. what's the number one thing that protects you against COVID is, so number two that protects you against COVID is probiotics, okay? Yeah. Number one is vitamin D. So yeah. for your sensitive skin, okay, you absolutely, everybody in this world today should be on vitamin D. Number one is it's a hormone that does all sorts of healthy things. So I don't care if you've had any cancer known to man, you should be on vitamin D. It's anti-cancer, okay? okay. okay. It's um, 
for for calming your skin for calming and anti-aging and um uh i mean there's nothing bad that vitamin d does okay yeah and look they start babies out the american academy of pediatrics starts babies out at 2000 i use a day i give everybody at least 5000 you and i who are cats on a hot tin roof would be yeah. 10,000 a day, okay? okay? And at the end of the day, everybody should have a blood level of vitamin D done and know that it's yeah. therapeutic and the higher within the therapeutic range, the better. But for calming your inflamed skin and gut, uh, yeah. incredibly important, Yeah. okay? Yeah. So vitamin okay. D next. Vitamin so D, can I just say a couple of questions, sorry. Okay, a lady ahead. just saying she might have joined Aisling. Is redness of the skin not rosacea, but red cheeks due to the inflammation of the gut or just sun damage, environmental damage? Okay, so it's always, look, I see, you know, there's that English rose cheeks that yeah. you talk about in the UK. It's, that's rosacea. It's rosacea. Okay? It's just a and mild form of rosacea. Yeah, their gut's yeah. inflamed. And generally yeah. because they're drinking, look, nobody should be drinking cow's milk and let the cow's milk industry come after me. But um, really, if, do you believe that emphatically, Julia? Yeah, nobody should be drinking. Look, bees supposedly can do dairy, but nobody. First of all, cow's milk has more sugar in it. Okay, um, uh, the sugar that's in cow's milk. And if you stop drinking and you go back to drink it, you'll, you'll taste how sweet it is. So mm -hmm. look, is oat milk a carb? Yeah, it's a carb. Okay, but nobody's allergic to oat milk. Okay, in the big picture, if you're going to eat some cheese, and everybody is, it should be goat or sheep second. And it's not that you can never eat cow's milk cheese. I mean, look, we all love a good whatever, whatever, okay, camembert, whatever. But um, it should be goat or sheep. It's less yeah. allergenic yeah. because people get rosacea and gut inflammation from eating cow's milk. Okay. Okay. So, so, so you're saying there's a very close correlation. So if somebody has a slight redness, maybe the first thing they should check is how much dairy they're eating. They should stop the dairy. Okay. okay. They should stop dairy. With One apologies. Other little, okay. Well, a and, lot of people so, are saying in a very different way. If you put a little bit way. in your yeah. coffee or tea, it's, it's not fine. for death. Yeah. Okay. okay. But a lot of people are picture. talking here about, you know, oh, my tummy's bloated by the evening. What's best for my tummy? Or... You know, I always get a bloated tummy. What can I do for it? And I'm looking at these now with our conversation taking place and thinking, you need to really be, I mean, you're putting a Band-Aid on if somebody says, okay, take some charcoal pills. You know, you've got to charcoal's be really not gonna do looking. It. Well, well, you know, whatever it might like, take yeah. some Omnipro, whatever, some, some Band-Aid for that bloated tummy feeling. It's really, you're eating something that doesn't agree with you that makes you bloated. Well, that's number one, okay? Number one. And then they should be taking their probiotics. But number two, it may be that they lack hydrochloric acid. One of the biggest causes of bloated tummies is low hydrochloric acid in your stomach. Which remind them what it is again for the people who've just joined. Okay, so hydrochloric, your stomach is supposed to be a vat of hydrochloric acid so that when you eat your food, it kills the bacteria, virus, fungus, plus it starts the digestion process in a major way. Okay, yeah. Yeah. same thing saliva does but then it hits the hydrochloric acid and starts the digestion process. So a lot of people who have bloating that the probiotics will make it a little better, but doesn't take it away. It, it's generally because they lack hydrochloric acid. So how do you know? Well, number one is, are you a blood type? Number yeah. two is, um, do when you eat your food, does it sit? Do you feel like, oh, I ate a horse, okay? Yeah. Do you feel like um, I ate too much? Um, and um, it's, it's, that's the, that's the real, those two things generally will cure bloating. Okay. okay. And if you've got bloating, your skin's going to be inflamed. It's so going to be really, yeah. You're going to be enlarged. You're going to get a pimple. You're going to be working on rosacea. Yeah. I want to okay. go quickly, Julia, back to vitamin D because people have asked questions, which I know, I know the answers to, but I just want to get them out there. So somebody's saying, oh, I get my vitamin D from the sun. Now, no. I know that if I've got SPF on, I'm not getting the vitamin D. And unless my tummy, which is, I think, the biggest place for absorption of vitamin D, 
is out there without SPF on it, I'm not really getting much vitamin D. Well, here's my but, response to that. Number okay. one is, if sun ages you, okay, yeah. Yeah. it causes wrinkles, yeah. okay, uh, um, then you take your pills. Number two is, I have sun worshipers in Los Angeles who, when I do their blood work, their, their vitamin D. They have low really vitamin low. D. Yeah. Okay. Why so is vitamin that, is really Why so is that? You can't make it enough. Well, okay. number one is the more stressed you are, the more vitamin D you need. And who's not stressed out in today's world? Okay. Okay. How much should we take, Julia? Because people are asking now, I know you've said, you know, there's a very nice vitamin D spray I take, which is, I think, 3,000 whatever. And I take like First three spray. sprays. Yeah. Yeah, I take like three sprays. I mean, I go for it. But what would you say? Because people say, how much should I take? Or is it a better a pill or a spray? So can we just give people a heads up? We on what can they pretty feel? well say, okay, now, understanding, I'm, I'm, because on occasion, I see people, so there are some people who lack uh, uh, enzymes genetically from birth in their yeah. liver. Okay. So they don't process fats very well, okay? okay. Those yeah. are the same people who usually are more, prone to have um, uh, gallbladder issues in their family, okay? Those people, virtually everybody, I say, should be on 5,000 IUs a day. The darker your skin is, the less you can make vitamin D. I don't care if you worship the skin, the sun all day long. Yeah. And the other thing they found in the vein of sun is that, for instance, in the UK, the sun doesn't hit the earth at the right angle to make vitamin D. So all those people yeah. are out in the park on a beautiful sunny day. Yeah, they're getting sunburned, but they're really not making enough vitamin D to be. Yeah. And I've seen some of the lowest vitamin D levels I've ever seen in the UK. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. the darker your skin is, for instance, my air conditioning man was over here the other day. He's Navajo. The Navajos are being devastated by COVID. Why are they being devastated by COVID? They're not taking vitamin D. Their skin is really dark. Okay. So everybody needs to just, it's like an insurance policy. Yeah. Okay, a really yeah. insurance policy to take vitamin D, um, anti-cancer, yeah. pro-skin, anti-aging. Yeah. I mean, it, it's for everything. Everybody yeah. should be taking okay. 5,000 a day. If yeah. babies are taking 2,000, and whenever you go to the doctor, Remind the doctor two heads are better than one. I want yeah. a vitamin D blood level. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to now go over a few things. Some lady she's left now said, May and Mandy D. I'm so sorry, Trini. I love you, but I can't listen to this anymore. It's simply not true or backed up by scientific evidence. So before you even say anything, Julia, I want to just say Julia is one of the firmest foremost dermatologists in America. She's written scientific papers and she's read thousands. So I just, just well, I, I, I'm I, not I, even gonna I welcome her to um, to uh, to send you a or me. Uh, yeah. certainly, I'm Julia. I'm just gonna say, send you know, I know I'm on yeah. why she says that because yeah. I'd be very happy to have a uh, Julia. Yeah, about that one. but yeah. I'm just for, it's for all the other audience there who have just joined. I mean, just she could say, just Google it. I mean, I know, I know, for, for, I, for, I know, for, Julia. Yeah. I'm yeah. just saying yeah. we don't even need to give it breath. All right, yeah. darling. Okay. But what I think is we're going to, time is up in a, in a minute, but okay. I just want to reiterate, because as usual with you, we go into such amazing detail, but just taking a, a, a step back and sort of synopsizing, synopsizing what we talked about is that your belief is that if people have some kind of Inflate, inflammation of the skin, which is a skin condition, rosacea, um, uh, eczema, psoriasis, uh, eczema, psoriasis, acne. Psoriasis, acne. Yeah. You believe the majority of this comes from the gut, and therefore, if you treat the gut, you can get rid of these skin conditions. So, right. is your gut health good? Consider looking at eating for your blood type. If you don't know which foods are good for you or not good for you, there's been a lot of years research of looking at your blood type and eating to a cord of that. You can read on on the internet. There's some, you, you've mentioned a lot of people in the feed here have mentioned some books. There's an app. So you can find out your blood type. You can think about this is what I should be eating is what I shouldn't. Maybe exclude some of those things. Sometimes the things we love the most we shouldn't be eating. And, you know, dairy, basic obvious things which inflame, cut them out your diet. So 
I think if somebody's serious and if their skin condition affects them enough that they're prepared to be disciplined enough to see if this could be correct. And if what Julia's saying has merit, if after two or three weeks you can think, my God, my skin feels better and I stuck to that regime, how life-changing would that be for you ladies and boys? I hear you, Craig and Chris. And if they're How not vegan, if they're not vegan, they should also be taking omega-3 fish oil because it's very anti-inflammatory. And the yeah. other thing that really helps with inflamed skin is vitamin C. Because anything, yeah. look, inflamed skin is inflammation. So first, yeah. don't be feeding the fire. And then how do you put out the fire? So you add in your anti-inflammatory. So if you're not vegan, omegas, uh, and also add vitamin C. And ideally, you start with 1,000 milligrams once a day, and you work up to at least 1,000 milligrams twice a day, ideally. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to say for anyone who's pregnant, take advice from your obstetrician, obviously. Yeah. So your levels of vitamins and supplements you should be taking, listen to him on that. Because this is, we are not talking here about women who are pregnant. We're talking about women who... Um, generally are not yeah right. and i'd say if you're pregnant you must check with your with your obstetrician um, and those things are in their prenatals anyway yeah great they are yeah. julia it's been such a pleasure and i know it's a you know what i think and it's i know you're pleasure. very All very right. busy but what would be really helpful julia and, and and just to say for people who've just joined you have told us two or three really great cleansers and yours which we love um but if there is any way as soon as you get off this call, you could put a list of those five things I'll do and, send, and send it to Louise. So I can put it at the end of this feed because I think just to have, number one, look at your diet. Number two, not the L-glycosamine, but the vitamin D, the, the supplement, the probiotic. You know, what are the five things, five things you can do to change your skin without putting one bloody product on it? Okay. I'll do okay. that. You're a superstar, Julia. So I know that we're going to do three of these conversations today with Julia, but I think, are we going to do menopause or we had two others? What are we going to do? Uh, we're doing one on acne. Acne. We're not doing them today. Are we doing it today? No, 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 no. We're not. We're no. doing it next yeah. week or the week yeah, after. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But one solely, solely on acne, too. We can yeah. go into different details. But do join us. Thank you for watching, girls and boys been a pleasure hello Gemma's mom I think it was her birthday and thank you so much for watching and Julia thank you so much it darling was it's always my darling. pleasure so ladies and boys I hope you enjoyed that I love I learn so much every time I speak to Julia and it is it it takes a lot to keep up with the conversation or maybe it's just me and I can't but I think that we'll try and list out everything she discussed so you can kind of do a checklist and if you feel I really have bad rosacea or my spots are really getting to me or, you know, I've had redness in my skin. Is it rosacea for years um, or eczema? Any of these things. How fantastic if you can change what you eat and it can improve hugely. How freeing and good would that feel? So great information. A joy to talk to her, and we'll catch on with you all soon. I've got skincare Q&A tomorrow morning at 9.15 on Facebook, so I'll join some of you then, and otherwise I'll join you. I think tomorrow night we have another guest. I can't remember who it is. Take care.